and welcome to the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name is Steve Reeves and I'm the host. And I put together a show today on PC communications. We're going to talk about modems, software, all kinds of different things. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. In case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name is Steve Reeves, and I'm the host. And we're going to talk about communications, or PC communications. I've got some modems. I've got internal, external, PCMCI cards. Uh, we've got different programs we'll talk about as far as communication programs, um, faxing programs, um, chatting, on, on, like on America Online or the Internet, all kinds of different things. Plus, I have some books of the, books of the week, I guess you might call them and software of the week. Uh, we've got all kinds of different things, but we're going to call this PC communications. Actually, it's not what it says on the screen, but just pretend it is. We're going to talk about modems, etc. All right? Um, first thing, before we go any further, I, I changed my slide that I have on the screen here on the bottom. We've had a lot of people, I, I, I really don't know what the deal is, but that can't get on my homepage, for example. And I don't know if maybe they didn't know they had to put the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, as you see on the bottom there, um, users.aol.com forward slash Steve, or it's, I'm sorry, S.A. Reeves forward slash Steve.htm. It's not HTML. And make sure you put the HTTP colon slash slash in front of it. My old slide, I didn't have the HTTP. Uh, colon forward slash forward slash and I think maybe some people couldn't get on because they didn't put that on there and the one below that of course is the um, web page the actual ace web page but the one above it on the second one from the bottom the users.aol that's my personal home page which I also have the schedules of what's going to be on the shows and and there's a section on well there's a couple different sections personal work related ace related which is this show American computer enthusiast and also just my favorite websites. I just have a bunch of them out there. And also the uh, hotline, and it'll come up at the breaks, but uh, the hotline for anybody that has any questions on anything, future shows, what they'd like to see in future shows, any kind of questions about any of the shows at all, the number, of course, is 587-6949, 587-6949. And then my personal email address is sareeves at aol.com. And there's quite a few people that leave me email, and I try to answer all the questions that come up. And uh, I've got some, well, I've got a couple here that will try to answer on the air some of the emails that I either didn't answer or I thought that would be pertinent to other people out there. So um, I try to answer every question that anyone emails me. So that's the, I just wanted to make sure that everyone that couldn't get on my web page made sure they typed it like that with the HTTP colon slash slash in front of the users. All right. Okay. First thing with communications, uh, you know, you hear about modems and and uh, baud rates and all types of different things. Um, one of the most confusing things right now, especially now, is you know what's the difference between the different baud rates? What's ISDN? What's T1? What's a, a digital line? What's an analog line? And what's all these different baud rates that are out there? Right now, pretty much the standard. And most computers that you buy today off the shelf or most of the computers that are out there that you buy turnkey are coming with either 14.4, which you can see right in the middle there. That's another thing that's really confusing is 14.4. Uh, is it 14,400? Is it 14.4? Is it 14.4? Nobody knows, but it's, it's all the same thing. 14,400 is the same thing as 14.4. 14.4 is a lot of people call it. So if you see 28.8 or 28.8 or 28,800, they're all the same. And a lot of people don't understand that they're, it's just, you know, computer lingo, you know, whatever is, you know, fastest, like acronyms. A lot of people like, you know, PCMCI. Really what that means is uh, people can't memorize computer industry acronyms. Really, that's what it is, PCMCI. But uh, there's, there's, everybody has shortcuts for just about everything for computers. The other thing is, um, T1 and ISDN, but that's more for 
um, companies. Not well. I mean, nowadays you have ISDN if you have your own like website or if you you know have lots of money and uh, you want to spend it on your um, a digital line at your house. And it really does make a huge difference in speed. You know, I mean, like 56. Thousand baud, for example, or T1. Most corporations and companies have T1 lines directly into their into their office, where it's really fast. I mean, it's almost as fast as if you're connected directly to the PC. Not always, but it can be really, really fast. But uh, another thing I see just recently is 36.6. I don't know where that number came from. I was at a computer place the other day, and a guy walked in and was asking a guy about a, mo a computer, a turnkey system, and uh, uh, he said, uh, I want a 28.8 modem. Guy goes, no, you don't. You want a 36.6. The guy looked at him like, what the heck is a 36.6? Well, apparently it's some new speed modem that's coming out. As a matter of fact, this guy was selling it cheaper than a 28.8 modem. So I don't know anything that actually supports 36.6. You know, like America Online or CompuServe, none of them have lines that go that speed. But I guess it's something faster, something that's coming out, and apparently they're coming out cheaper for some reason. Speaking of that real fast, I just the place that I was at was a place that was selling RAM chips. I can't believe how cheap RAM is. And this has nothing to do with communications, but I'm just going to talk about it real fast. I saw in the paper on Sunday, in the Sunday Chronicle, that they're selling, there's a place in town, I guess I can mention the name, it's ChipSmart. Um, they have, I know they have a place up by in the woodlands or spring or somewhere like that and there's another one on 45 on by airport they're selling ram chips for like 50 60 dollars for an 8 meg sim now there's no reason not a single reason unless you have like 30 pin sims but these are 72 pin sims i should have brought one so people know what i'm talking about an 8 meg 72 pin sim for about 60 dollars between 50 and 60 dollars so there's no reason now people shouldn't have uh you know, 30, you know, whatever, 32 megs of RAM in their PC. It used to be, I mean, six months ago, uh, a four meg SIM was $149. Now you can buy an eight meg SIM for 50 or $60. So all the people out there that are thinking about updating the Windows 95, but everyone told them don't do it unless you have more memory. Now is a perfect, perfect excuse to uh, upgrade to Windows 95 and put more memory in your computer. And, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money. It's still expensive, but it's not as, half as expensive, a quarter as expensive it was six months ago. But anyways, I got off the subject there. But anyway, um, this, uh, as far as baud rates, I wouldn't recommend nowadays anything less, anything less than 28.8 or 28,800 baud, mostly because of America Online, CompuServe, when you're downloading files or you're, you know, you're doing anything, any kind of interaction with, with the internet, Anything slower than 28.8 is just, it's, it gets kind of agonizing and a lot of people get real frustrated with the, with the speed. Uh, a lot of people have 14.4. I, have, I actually have a 14.4 internal uh, PCMCI, which I'll show in a minute, um, modem. And in some cases, if you don't want to carry around another modem or you don't have another modem, a lot of times it's hard to justify upgrading to a 28.8 because like PCMCI cards, I'll just hold one up here, this little PCMCI card that goes into the side of the computer, it's like a little credit card. Um, you know, these things are still pretty expensive. When I bought this, it was like $309 for a 14.4. Now you can get a 28.8. It's still around 200, a little over $200. You might be able to find some different brands for less, but they're still relatively expensive compared to an in, a regular internal in a desktop computer or an external, which I'll show in a minute. So. A lot of times it's hard to justify just throwing this thing out because these things aren't really upgradable because there's really not much to them, so there's not a whole lot to upgrade. But we'll talk about more about this in just a minute. But the, uh, um, as far as, like I said, 28.8 is what I'd recommend. And I, like I said, most turnkey systems that come today that you can buy at all the different computer places around, all you know, the uh, Compaqs and IBMs and all Packard Bells and everything else, most are coming now, finally, with 28.8 internal modems. Even Macintoshes are coming with 28.8s for the most part. Um, and, but again, be, mostly because the prices are coming down on the external and the internal modems. Really cheap. You can buy, I've seen in the paper in different places, a 28.8 modem for sometimes less than $100 for an internal modem. 
So that's actually the next slide that comes up, internal or external. That's a, I don't know if there really is a right answer for this, and I, I've talked about this before on different shows that we talked about different things, but the difference between an internal and external, of course there's a couple letters, but um, is mostly the price. They, mo they both do the same thing. This is an internal modem right here. It has the little connections. Can't really zoom in here, but the, it has the two connections, the two phone connections. One that's got the, uh, that you put your line in from your house, you know, I mean from the wall, the regular connection that goes in. And the other one is for your phone. If you want to connect, say you only have one jack in your house and you want to have a phone connected to, you know, to the wall and you have, th you have your modem plugged into the wall, you can plug your phone line into this one so you have coming from the wall this really isn't coming from the wall but going into here and then out of here into the, into your phone so that you can still use your phone even though you have it plugged into the computer the main difference between these two things is of course it's all it's less expensive because it doesn't have a box the other thing is is for a long time it was hard to configure these things now it's real easy you can, because you can now um, configure them for communications or COM port or serial port one, two, three, or four. And uh, before it would either be only COM one or COM two. But nowadays, with Windows 3.1, Windows 95, it'll actually search for, and you can actually adjust the. If it's not, if it's a new plug and play, it'll automatically find it. But if it's like with Windows 95, but some of the older ones had little dip switches that you have to switch to make it COM three or COM four. So if you had already had two COM ports on your PC, two different serial ports, like a 9-pin and a 25-pin serial port. Um, but the other thing, that a, a big difference between this and an external is there's no lights. You can't tell if it's working or not working. And that one thing right there is one reason why I always like external. Now, some of the, uh, there's little public domain programs that you can actually um, have up in the corner of your PC, up in the screen. It'll show you, it'll or represent the lights that are on an external modem which are pretty cool, um, but I like to be able to see that it's really working and that it's connecting, that it's high speed, it didn't connect at low speed, for example, make sure that it connected at 28.8. Also, you can see, um, you can always hear if it's connection, connecting, of course, the dial tone and things like that, which will go through the speaker of the PC if it doesn't have a speaker on here. Most of them nowadays will come through the speaker of the PC. So they don't, that's why they can make these boards so small now, they don't have to put a speaker on here anymore. All right? But that's an internal modem. Again, this is the, probably the least expensive modem you can buy right now. And you want to go as fast as possible, like 28.8 or faster, like 36.6 or whatever, wherever that speed came from all of a sudden. All right, this is going to be hard to hold up here because I'm actually connected right now, so I don't make sure I don't disconnect it. But this is a, an external modem. This has, the same, has lights in the front. You can see the lights on it. You can see that they're actually lit up here. I have to look at the monitor to see I'm holding to make sure there's no glare. All right? These are lights. They'll tell you if it's high speed, if it's transmitting, they'll blink on and off or whatever. You can see real easy that it is working and that it is connected. In the back, it also has two connections. One for the phone, one, I mean one for that's connected to the wall, and one that's for the phone. Same exact thing as the internal. But this one has a cable. This has a 25 pin. Most all modems that I've seen that are around nowadays have 25 pin connections on the modem. And then at the other end, you either have a 9-pin or a 25-pin connected to your PC. Nowadays, most PCs are coming with 9-pin serial ports. It's, you know, less 9 pins, of course, or 25 pins. And then there's the power supply. That's another big difference that I forgot to bring up. You don't have to have a power supply for this internal. The external always has a power supply. It has to be hooked up to the wall. So you have to have a, not only do you have to have a, uh, a cable, but you have to have a connection. Now, sometimes, you know, like I said, if you're, you've got lots of computers like me, because I'm a nerd, um, you've got all kinds of uh, power supplies all over the place, and I hate wires, but you have to have all kinds of wires when you have external. So that's one big advantage of internal are less wires, less cable connections, and less power supplies. And then, of course, this has an on-off switch, so you can turn it on and off. Not that you, you know, really care about that all the time, but sometimes if you don't have it connected to a power strip or some sort of a power supply, sort of, I mean a surge protector or something like that, you know, you'd like to be able to turn it on and off so you can turn it on and off with the switch. With the internal, you don't have to worry about that. All right, I'm going to try to connect 
set this down here without turning it off and disconnecting from what I'm connected to on here. All right. The next one is is still an internal, but it's a PCMCI card. The PCMCI, like I said, stands for People Can't Memorize Computer Industry Acronyms. Not really, but that's a little joke there. It's a computer joke, right? Um, this is a megahertz. This is the 14.4 that I was talking about. They now make a 28.8 version of this, and <clears throat> this this actually has a little connection that pops out of the side. You can see, let me see, I can see this, make sure everybody can see what I'm talking about. This pops out, and this little connection comes in here. Now, this used to be a pretty, you know, uh, slick thing because it was the only people that you didn't have to have a connection to, like a cable sticking out the side. Now almost everyone has some sort of a modem that has this. I saw um, Simple Technologies, the people that make the uh, memory um, modules for notebooks and things like that. They have one now with this. Actually, it, it's a, about the same, but it's a little bit different the way it connects in here. Everybody's coming out with these new little connections because this way you don't have to have all kinds of cables laying around and connections and things. You can just pop this thing out when it's sticking out the side. It goes in the PCMCI slot of your notebook computer. These only work on notebook computers, unless for some unknown reason you happen to have a PCMCI slot. I've actually seen them in the front of desktop computers where it had, instead of a um, disk drive, they actually have a slot for a PCMCI card. I've also seen them in the back, and they have them like built into a card in your PC, but not very often does that ever happen. There are not many, very many people that have those. Um, but anyways, this is a megahertz PCMCI card. Now, the other one that I brought here, this is actually a pretty cool one. This one is a dual PCMCI card. This one has, same thing, it slides right into the little slot on the side of your notebook here, PCMCI slot. This is made by 3Com. This is their Etherlink 3. And this one has two connections on it. You can see that it, the, the reason it's, it's called the LAN plus modem, LAN and modem PC card. Nowadays, again, we talked about this one time a while ago, not as much are we calling these PCMCI cards. These are more called just PC card as opposed to PCMCI card. But this one has two connections. The one connection is, of course, the modem. It has these things come off here, these little connections. If you, oop, let me make sure here. Stay connected. I didn't want to be connect, disconnected there. Um, this one, you pull this out and it has a little phone on it. I don't know if you can see that. And there's a little phone on the card and it only plugs into one place. Both these will come off. But you can see that this is the modem part and it has two jacks on here, two holes. Just like the modem that was on the, um, that was on the internal or, or the, the internal and the external modem. There's a connection for the phone and the connection for the wall jack. So there's two connections. So if you don't, you know, use this all the time, you can actually disconnect it. The other connection is actually a network connection. It has the, again, it has a little symbol on, uh, right on the card where you can take, where you can actually take this. So if you're not always connected for, to the network, like you, you're at your office and you go home and you don't have a network, well, if you're a nerd, you have a network at your house. But this way you can disconnect this, but it actually has a uh, connection, a network connection at the end. So this is actually, you can kill two birds with one stone. A, net, a network connection and a modem connection. Now these are actually quite a bit more expensive than just the regular um, modem that you would have, but it's better than having to have two different cards or an internal because a lot of PCs only have a slot for like one PCMCI card and you'd have to have an external modem and then one of these or something. This way you can uh, have two devices in one slot. The other thing is uh, Sometimes there are sound boards and things that you can buy as a PCMCI uh, adapter or hard drives or memory or whatever. This way you have a less, you know, you don't have to take up as much space with the PC card or the PCMCI card that you have. Now these things run anywhere from three to five or six hundred dollars. Actually, it depends on the brand. It depends on uh, different things, but I've seen them for, they're around five hundred dollars, you know, four or five hundred dollars, I guess, is probably the median range for this kind of dual connector, all right? Um, I guess what we're gonna do is gonna take a quick break here and we'll come back and we'll start talking about communication software and books and all, we've got all kinds of things to talk about. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Hi everyone, welcome.
welcome back to the show. In case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast Show, or ACE as we call it. My name's Steve Reeves, and I'm the host. And we're talking about PC communications. We're talking about modems. We're talking about communication software, different things. I've got brought a bunch of books. We've got some websites of the week. We've got all kinds of different things. So we'll go right, right into, we'll dive right into the next section. The next section I want to talk about, and I don't have a whole lot to say about these, mostly because they're not as popular as they used to be. But the first thing is communication software. Now, for a long time, people use this to communicate back and forth between PCs and, and uh, to connect to bulletin board systems and things like that. But nowadays, I don't know how many people still connect to bulletin boards. Every so often, you might see some um, manufacturer or something that says they have a bulletin board with their drivers or, or something like that. But for the most part, almost everything you can find is either on the web or America Online, or CompuServe, or Prodigy, or something like uh, Microsoft Network. All the drivers and new, you know, all the up, you know, a lot of the bug fixes and things like that are on uh, the the web. So not as many people connect to bulletin board systems. But if you do need to do that or whatever, probably the the most common or the probably the de facto, and it's been like this for a long time, is probably Procom. Not necessarily the, you know, the best or whatever, but it's just been around for a long time. It's always, they've always had a DOS version, then they went to Windows, and now they have a Windows 95 version. And it varies in price depending on what version you get and things like that, but um, there's other people that now make pretty slick communication software packages, like Delrina, the same people that make WinFax Pro. They make a communication software program. Actually, it's bundled in their uh, Com Suite. If you buy their Com Suite 95 package, that we've actually showed it on the show before, where it, you know you can connect to bulletin boards and do things like that. Some of these software packages actually have like built-in browsers, so you can connect to the to the uh, internet, or you can actually connect to PCs like some sort of remote software, which is the next slide I come have come up here, is your, the remote communication software or communications, as I put it here. I'm not sure which one's right. But um, pro again, pro there's quite a few of these out. There's probably three or four that are pretty well known, like you know, it's carbon copy and remote control and different things like that. But one that's real popular, and they have a new version that's out right now is for Windows 95, is PC Anywhere for Windows 95. And that's a real good way to connect two PCs together. And actually, like you can be at your office and be at your house and connect the two PCs, or you can be out of town and connect your PC at your desk, again, if you are a nerd and you happen to have more than one computer, and you have it running on your PC at your house, and you're out of town, you can actually dial in and connect to your PC and, uh, and actually be working as if you're on your PC at your house. Now, there's other packages that are out there that, you know, that claim all kinds of different things. It's faster, that it's, it's got all kinds of different things to upload and download files faster the way it works. The interface is a little different or whatever. But again, I'm not actually picking one that's best or not, but I know I use uh, the PC Anywhere for Windows 95, and it's a pretty slick package, all right? Online services. Now, we've actually done shows on, on all the online services. One that we actually did, just talking about it, the Internet. We've, we've actually done a, a lot of shows on the Internet. James has done a lot of shows on the Internet on different utilities and things and, and how to use it and whatever. We've done shows with favorite websites and, and uh, fun websites and... Carlos did one where they weren't really fun at all, but I won't bring that up. I'm just kidding, Carlos. Anyway, um, but we also have done shows on comparing Prodigy with America Online, Microsoft Network, and CompuServe, and how they all compare and how they do different things. And I'll actually bring up, in just a minute here, um, we'll bring up America Online and we'll show how you can use uh, America Online to chat with different people. And I'm going to show different things that you do with your PC besides um, just going on America, I mean, America Online or or just the web or whatever. Also, we have some software that I'll talk about, online services. While I have this up here, I might as well talk about this. This is one that's really becoming popular all of a sudden. I mean, it is everywhere. And it's the, uh, the new Nations Bank PC Banking. And what this is, this is actually the, the uh, program. It's actually uh, managing your money. And it's now put out, or I guess they um, Nations Bank bought them or something. I'm not exactly sure how it all works. but this is a program that you put on your PC, and if you have a modem, internal, external, PCMCI, whatever, and you can connect into the bank and do all your banking trans transactions and, uh, from your PC at your house. You can find out, you can do your checkbook. It's a lot like Quicken, 
I don't know if they like me saying that, but um, you can actually, speaking of Quicken, if you have Quicken already, you can actually transfer your data into this or this into Quicken so that if you like one or the other, but this, they use this package that's called Managing Your Money. And I don't know if it's, it's got a little picture on the back. I don't know if you can see this or not. Again, we've got, I like to keep, keep the cameraman on their, on their toes here, but it's got a little desk and it goes around, I'll see if I, I have to look at the monitor so I can see what I'm pointing at. It's got the desk, it's got your checkbook up here, it's got, you know, you can do all your little transactions just by um, hitting what you need to do on this desk. And again, it's got things like you can actually find out about or apply for bank loans, you can apply, find out about your banking, uh, um, there's all kinds of things, mortgage financing, tuition planning, all types of, pay your bills, you can actually pay your bills using this. And right now, I think they've got some sort of a special where you get it for free. And, but you can call Nations Bank, they'll tell you all about it. I just pay, I don't know what it costs, I just do it, you know. Um, because I'm a nerd, I like to use as much computer stuff as possible, you know. But this is actually a pretty cool program. And like I said, it's been around, it was, it was, another, it was called something else before, I can't remember what it was called, but it was a DOS-based program and it wasn't quite as cool. This is a Windows-based program and it's a lot slicker. That's a technical term there. But anyway, it's a, it's a lot easier to use, and since a lot of people use managing your money, it's a lot easier to do that, you know, to keep up with what's going on, and, and it does all your transactions and everything else. But this is a pretty cool thing to have right here, all right? Next thing, chatting with others. This is something that you can do with your PC. Now, hopefully, if I'm still connected, if I didn't disconnect, we did a show, I don't know, a couple months ago on 40 things you can do with your computer, and this was one of the slides that I showed, and, but we never really talked much about it, so I thought I would talk more about it now. And we've had quite a few people that have left messages on the, on, well, email to me and also on our hotline about chatting with others, about what they need, which one's better, America Online, does it, can you do it on the, on the internet, do you have to copy serve, whatever. We'll show on, on America Online, for example, just an example of how to do it. We'll actually do it right here on the, on the air. But also I found a, uh, um, a page. Let's just go. Let's just go down here real fast. Just we'll go to this other thing here. We'll go to this other um, web page that I'm going to go to. Now this is called um, Emporium's Chat Link. I don't know. I, I just did a search and it came up. Now this is WW. I'll have to, I'll, what I'll do is at the break I'll actually make a slide and put this on here because the slide that was on the other one. Forget I ever put that up there, right? The one that was up there just a minute ago. Apparently, the, the connection is gone. I don't know what it was. It used to be this cool website that had all these web pages for these chat lines and things. Every single thing. Well, now this one actually has even more. It has like, it says right here over 400 different chat links. And uh, this one here, you can see, you can go down here to uh, um, adult ad adoptee chat. There's uh, all different, every single thing in the world. Amateur radio chat. And what you can do on these things is talk to other people that have the same interests as you. And you can actually get on there and you can, you know, you can actually talk to people as you're going, you know, type in questions and answers and, and find out about different things. I get on the one, for example, all the time and find out about, um, you know, computers. Like I said, because I'm a nerd, you know. But you can always find out different times of the day there's different chats set up for different, um, like, sessions and things like on PCs or, or um, on Windows 95 or questions and answers or different vendors. For example, on Thursday nights from, you know, 10 to 11, they have an open line where you can ask, you know, the uh, technical support people any kind of question you might have about a certain modem or a certain software package or something like, you know, whatever. But there's all different types of chat lines. Like there's one here for antique cars, for um, anglers, for, uh, you know, for fishermen. There's uh, just automobile racing, automobile chat. There's uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, baseball chats, basketball chat. Uh, there's some that we don't want to talk about there. Adult, there's also adult chats too, but that's another show that we did a couple, weeks, um, a couple months ago also on, on parental control. You want to block some of those things out. You don't want you know, some of these uh, adult or X-rated chat lines. You want to keep your kids off those. All right, um, we'll have to do another show on that also. Uh, there's also just collectors, there's football chat, comedy chats, all different types of things. So what I'm going to do is why don't we get out of here and we'll just, I'm going to double click and get out of uh, uh, the internet and we're going to actually, let's start up, I'm just going to go over here and say escape, escape, hello, escape. 
and we'll just kind of minimize this and let's start up America Online. Now America Online is just, again, just one of the online services that we may, that we can use here. There's CompuServe, Prodigy, the Microsoft Network, or any one of those chat lines there. And uh, hopefully we'll have no problem connecting here. You know, I like, I like to have as many problems as possible on, 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 while we're on the air, all right? But while we're talking about, okay, ready? Get set, sign on. Okay, while we're doing, while we're connecting, oh, great. That's great. I love problems, all right? All right, let's cancel out of here. That was the problem. We were still connected for some reason to the, uh, to the internet. Now we can do it. While we're doing that, and while we're initializing the modem there, I'm going to talk about some of the books of the week. I've got about five or six of them here. And for example, I, I've never showed these before, but these are some of my favorite books. These little field guide books. They're made by my, the Microsoft, put out by Microsoft Press. And I have got these things on Windows 95. And I like them because they're small and they're easy to carry around. But I have one on Windows 95, one on Excel for Windows 95. Now these are all... Um, books that are actually put out by Microsoft and they're in alphabetical order. So if you know what you're looking for, which is kind of like a dictionary, if you know what you're looking for, you know where it is. If you don't, tough luck. Um, but you can look up anything for Excel. I use this all the time for looking things up and I can look real fast on, you know, text string formulas. Look under T, there it is, text string formulas. And it's got some pretty cool shortcuts and little tips and tricks and all kinds of different things. I have one here for Excel and I have another one for Word. Now, I have these for just about every software package. There's one for all the different Microsoft pro, um, programs like Project and, and PowerPoint and things like that. Ooh, we're, we're connected here. But th I like these books just because they're small and easy to carry around. And, and uh, they're pretty inexpensive. They're like $9.95 a piece. So if you go to Bookstop and you have one of those cards, you get your whatever percent discount it is. They're pretty inexpensive. But I like them just because they're simple and easy to use. Okay, this came up here. Actually says I have mail. But we won't read my mail now. And we'll go in here. And what this does is there's different things. There's actually one on America Online called People Connection. So if you hit People Connection, it'll come up and boom, just like that. We're in a, we're in a room right now. And we can actually type in, and hopefully nothing wacky comes up while we're in this room here. But if we go in here, we, you can see along the top, this one happens to be called Lobby 92. You can go in here and do list of rooms and it'll have a whole list of all the different topics that are going to be talked about on different, like there might be one on computers, there might be one on, you know, like some of those things we saw in that other connection there. Uh, there's also parental control. If you hit the parental control button up here on the top, you can actually block out certain chat rooms. Like if there's an adult chat room or some X-rated chat room that might be on there, you can actually go in there and actually block that one out so the kids can't get in there chat preferences, you can actually set this up, Notif notify me when a member arrives. Like for example, when I got on there, people up, up in the corner up here, you can actually see all the people that are in this chat room and in the names. And it'll change every so often. It'll actually tell you there's 23 people all together in this chat room. So you can actually have it notify me when someone comes in, like me for example, and it'll beep or whatever, it'll come up and tell you that somebody came in. Notify me when someone leaves. Um, double space income messing messages because what happens is it can kind of messy if you get a lot of messages from different people alphabetize not that different you know you can alphabetize the the members that are that'll be up here in this little box up here in the corner and actually you can also do sounds it'll ding when somebody comes in and dong when it goes, somebody goes out or whatever we'll just leave it the way it is um, let's go over here to list rooms this room this one here you can see there's quite a few of them there's uh there's the Teen chat. There's a. Uh, there's all kinds of things. Um, Hollywood tonight. Over 40. That's almost me. It's everyone else in the room, but not me. But I'm getting close. All right. Um, Starfleet Academy. Tarot cards. Teen chat. Uh, meeting place. There's all kinds of different things. A lot of them will actually tell you if you try to get into one. For example, it'll actually say there's too many people in there. I'm not sure what the limit is. I think you can actually set the limit. But it'll say that there might be another one that's real similar for example there may be one called here's one called 30 something you may try to get into that let's do it right now get into 30 something it says the room you requested is full would you like to go to another room just like it I'll say yes and it'll go into that room called and it'll say you're in 30 something room and 
It'll, and some of these things, left, I don't know all the codes for all these things, but it'll actually go in there and it'll tell you the person that's typing in what they're talking about and you know, you can complain about being 30 or 30 something or go to the 41 and complain about being 40. But there's also different things like the PC studio, for example. This one here has different things for having, relating to the PC. You know, what's happening this week, center stage, there's different chats for different things having to do with the PC. And again, like I said, there are different times. There may be at night, some of them are in the afternoon, depending on the, the people that are actually supervising or whatever, doing the chats. There's also chats, I've seen them before on CompuServe, America Online, where you can actually talk to the stars, you know, and like there's a, I can't think of anybody right now, but I've actually seen them where you can go on there and you can actually leave messages and they're online with regular movie stars, stars or TV stars and you can actually talk to them back and forth. Now the one thing about that is, they're way behind. You can actually type something in, they might not get that message for a half an hour or maybe never, they may never answer your question. So you don't get frustrated if you get on some of those. All right. The other thing is there's center stage where you can go in there and uh, you, oop, this is the, uh, I didn't download the newest art here, we won't do that right now. But it'll actually, um, there's the America Online Live, where you can go in there and actually go on. There's different things. I've seen it on like MTV, for example. They have a show that actually while you're watching the show, it actually you can type in and leave messages during the show and it actually shows it up on the screen. So we'll just go in here. I don't know if anybody's trying to talk to us or not. I guess we could be talking, but let's just keep going here. But we can actually go down here and type like uh, uh, we're on TV. <laughs> Anyone out there? Um, anyone want to talk to us or something? If I could type fast, it'd be better. You got, you got to learn, t learn to type real fast when you're on these things. Anyone want to talk to us? And then you hit send down here. And we'll see if anybody happens to answer us. But anyway, there's these chat lines are on all the different online services. There's, uh, you know, like I said, Prodigy, CompuServe, America Online, like we're doing now. And also the... Um, um, the uh, Microsoft Network, but also there's tons of them on the internet. All right, nobody's answering us. Nobody cares. Apparently, nobody wants to be on TV. All these different things. I don't even know what they're talking about here. Oh, there it is. Because we're not on TV because we're friendly. See, they're they're just being nice because we're they're not on TV. But we can go in there and say uh, we really are on TV. Well, anyways, well, let's not do that. But anyway. This, but you can set up your things. Let's go back here real fast. I just want to show you the parental control part of it. If we go to parental control, this actually goes to another section on parental control. And like I said, we did a show about this a couple, well, it was about a month ago on, on parental control. But you can actually block out not only these chat lines, but other sites, adult sites, X-rated sites, pornographic sites, whatever's out there. Um, there's all types of wild things that are out there. But again, I, I, guess I want to make sure everybody knows, I said this on the show, there's only a small portion of the internet and whatever that is, that type of thing. There's more good things than there are bad things. So you don't have to block out everything. But th this is where you would send, set up to block out, you can actually specify chat lines or anything relating to certain words or whatever. But this is just something that comes with America Online. So what I want to do here, I think they're telling me I need to take a quick break. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. In case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name is Steve Rees and I'm the host and we're talking about PC communications. We're talking about modems, software, we've got books, we got, we're talking about chat links, all kinds of different things you can do with a modem. Not just hook up to the network, I mean hook up to uh, um, the internet or hook up to an uh, online service and things like that, but also different fun things you can do. One thing that I talked about on the last section was uh, I was actually showing that chat link web page. It was called Emporium's Chat Links. 
And I made a slide so you can see the address. It's http colon forward slash forward slash www.webcom.com forward slash e forward slash chatbeg.html. Make sure you do html at the end there. But, uh, and that is forward slash e forward slash in the, in the middle there. All right, so again, I always put this information on my web page and I'll show that again at the end of the show. But um, in case you don't get this written down or something or you can't find a piece of paper, you're running around the house right now and yelling at the dog and everything to get out of the way because you can't find a pen or whatever. Anyways, here's the, uh, the web page, uh, the address for that web page, right? One, two, three, go. All right. We'll show it again, and like I said, it'll be, uh, it'll be on my web page. Email bag. <clears throat> While we're, um, before we go into something else, I'm going to, here's one of the uh, messages or emails or mail, whatever you want to call it, I got uh, through my uh, email address. And actually one guy, uh, somebody actually asked for, this is actually a two-parter here, for uh, the HP guy that was on a couple weeks ago, his email address, and hopefully I have it on there. There it is right there if you want to show it up there. there I put on both things, both the HP web page, which is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, I don't have to say it every time, but www.hp.com. And, uh, and then he wanted, Robert Thornton was the guy that was on there. Actually, two different people asked the same identical question. I don't know if everybody didn't run and get a piece of paper or whatever, had some questions, ask them. But Robert Thornton was his name. He was from Hewlett Packard here in Houston. And his address is Robert underscore Thornton at I, that's an I as in um, Indiana, um, 3125NG2 dot or period ATL dot HP dot com. So that's Robert underscore Thornton. That's T H O R N. That's not an M. It's it's not a M, it looks like an M, but it's R-N-T-O-N at I3125NG2.atl.hp.com. Again, I'll put this on my web page. I, I thought I did, but I guess I didn't put it on my web page for an address. All right, let's go back to the, uh, we'll just leave that up there. Um, that was the one question that somebody had. The next question was, somebody had um, a question about viewing faxes. They said, I used to have a Panasonic uh, KX, which is a dot matrix printer with Windows 3.1 and Procom Plus for Windows. And uh, now she has a uh, US Robotics 14.4 fax modem. And Procom has a fax viewer software and being able to fax things. I, right off the bat, I don't use Procom's anything to do with the faxing part of Procom. I use WinFax Pro. As a matter of fact, I use a new version, WinFax Pro for 95. And it seems to be it's built for faxing, it's built for viewing, it's built for printing out faxes, everything else. I just find the interface and everything having to do with it a lot slicker. I know that's something else you have to buy, but you can actually, I've seen out there WinFax Lite, for example. There's a WinFax Lite version that's out there that doesn't cost as much, and a lot of computers are, they'll come with new computers and things. But I would recommend, because what happens is, uh, she's saying that it's real slow to print out if she starts to use that. WinFax Pro's got it down pretty down, pretty down pat, and it's it's really slick the way it works, and and that's pretty much what they do. I mean, they they they've got the win the faxing part of PCs down, and then I don't think I don't know if there's some other people that have it out there, but I'd say they they're pretty much the standard as far as faxing from your PC, and it'll go to just about any any printer that's Windows compatible, any kind of uh, desk um, desk jet, laser jet, dot matrix, or whatever. It's not as cool looking on a dot matrix, but you know, it depends on the resolution of the, how many pins are on your dot matrix printer. But I would highly recommend looking at WinFax Pro for using, for, for using your faxing from your PC, all right? Um, hotline messages, I actually kind of combined them there, but uh, again, I want to make sure everybody calls and I'll show the, it'll be at the breaks and also I'm on the last page that we show today. Um, make sure you call the hotline and leave messages, questions you might have answers you might have, uh, you know, any kind of suggestions for future shows, what you'd like to see in future shows or whatever. Um, web page of the week. Um, what I'm going to do, before I do this, let's go back. I, I need to go back, back one step here because I'm actually connected to an online service. I'm probably paying a bajillion dollars here. 
Um, I, I just hooked up to Prodigy just for an exa another example. I was hooked up to America Online before and I could have hooked up to anything because I am a nerd and I have all these different online services. I pay way too much money, by the way. You think they give them to me for free or reduce price because I show them on TV, but no, they don't. Um, like I was telling you that certain times of the day, there's different things that go on with these different chat lines. I just happened to bring up Prodigy and immediately it showed right here that there's a guest, New York's finest, NYPD Blue, which is one of my favorite shows, by the way. Um, Kim Delaney chats at 9 p.m. Eastern, exactly what I was saying. The different times of the day, they'll have different people on or different discussions and different things. So we can actually just go directly to that or we can go on the bottom down here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's different little buttons along the bottom. One of them is what uh, is actually that black blinking light there is menu because we're in the menu right now. Uh, there's actually the, uh, well, I just covered it up with my, uh, with my uh, start menu for that, but there's actually one that's called chat. And uh, we'll just go right here. We'll just click on this guest and it'll go into that chat line that'll go to Kim Delaney. There's other things also on here that you can go into, they have a bunch of different chat lines on Prodigy, just like they do on all the other online services. Oh, I don't really want to do this, but um, anyway, the, uh, we'll just keep talking while this is downloading here. Hopefully it won't take very long, but I think it's going to. So we'll just go, while this is downloading, we'll go down here to PowerPoint. We'll do two things at once. We're multitasking, all right? We'll be uh, like a um, Windows 95 or a Unix thing. Web page of the week. Um, I've got a couple of different new ones that I found just recently. One is called Bigfoot. Now we've talked about different pages like this that are out there. There's one that's called, it's called www.bigfoot.com. You can throw away your white pages for every city in the United States. You can look up anybody, their name, address, and phone number on this web page, www.bigfoot.com. Make sure you put the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash in front of that. Now this is actually a pretty cool page. I've seen this written up in a couple different magazines and it was on like cool site of the week and different things like that. But I'd actually found it just by mistake one day as I was surfing around, but now it's all over the place. But you can find out anything in the white pages. All right, the next one, web page of the week two, is a big book. You can throw away your yellow pages. Just get away, you just throw away all your yellow pages and uh, Anything, you can look up any kind of business there is. Well, anything that's in the yellow pages, actually for any city in the United States, I've been able to look up just about anything I'd ever want in any, you know, Cincinnati or Toledo or whatever, any kind, any kind of business that you would find in the yellow pages. Then another one, this is just my fun website of the week. We actually get on here if you want to in, in a little bit. Let's see, let's see how our uh, prodigy thing's doing here real fast. Oh, it's 36% done. Um, this is www.snapple.com. Anybody that drinks Snapple or watches the commercials or anything else, this is actually a pretty fun website. They've got all kinds of different things you can do on here. And again, it's just a simple, I like the graphics more than anything else. It's, it's, a, it's a fun site to just kind of browse through and kind of go look at and see all the funny different pictures that they've drawn and different things having to do with Snapple. But they have like a place where you can leave messages, there's things where you can actually write different things about Snapple, you can win prizes, you can, um, there's all different types of sections that you can go to. It actually has a section, you can't really see this, but the first time you log on, when you log on to the page, it'll have two little buttons, one on the right that you can't see, but that's, if you've been, I mean, if you've ever been on here, you'll click on that, and it actually has a little orientation to make it simple for you to you know, find your way around the Snapple page. Yeah, as if it would be pretty hard. And then on the left is if you've already been there before, you can actually get on there and you can register and you can put your name and everything else, send you stuff and all kinds of wacky things. I wish they'd send you more Snapple to be pretty cool. But anyway, you hit the side. I just did a screen capture here and that's how, what I did right here. Um, but if you've been on here before, like you just hit right here and you go to the, to the next page. And like I said, it's got all kinds of different fun connections, different kind of pages that you can have for different things like that. Let's go past that right there. Software of the week. Actually, we already showed it. I was going to, I kind of killed two birds with one stone, but the one software that I was going to show was this Nation Bank's Managing Your Money. I don't see any reason to show it on here because a lot of people have seen it. It looks just a lot like Quicken or if you've ever used Managing Your Money. I would recommend calling your Nation's Bank or whatever and, and try to get it if you happen to have a, a bank account at Nation's Bank. But this was my software of the week 
So I kind of already talked about this. I'm sorry, but anyway. All right. Um, books of the week. I talked about a few, but I have a few more here. One that I, um, one, another book that I actually, let's see how my prodigy thing's doing down here. Oh, it's 87% done. We're getting there, all right? I'll just keep flipping back and forth. You can, you can already see I have no problem talking. I can talk for forever. I talk too much. Anyway, this is a, another one of my books of the week. I, bought, I brought way too many books, but I'll just keep on showing them here. This is actually Surviving Day One with Windows 95. Now, this to some people would seem pretty basic, but uh, people that have never used Windows 95, this is actually a pretty cool book. It's short and to the point, and it's inexpensive. It's like 10 bucks, and it's got color pictures in it. One thing I like, color pictures, you know? Um, but it's got exactly what you see on the screen is what you see in the book. So you can go right through and find out, you know, it, may, it looks more like what you're actually looking at. A lot of times you get these books and it doesn't look anything, when you look in there on the pages, it doesn't look anything like what you're looking on the screen. You can't figure out what you're doing. This thing actually goes through, it's got all the basics, getting started, printing things. It's got all kinds of different, you know, how to adjust the settings in your monitors. Simple things that a lot of people don't know when they first get Windows 95. They can't figure out how to do something. You know, this is real short. I think it's only got like, a, it's got like 90 pages. So yeah, you can read this in a couple of minutes, you know, no problem. But anyway, it's, it's actually, it's how to make your little icons, how to set up the buttons and how to save documents, how to um, set up little shortcut buttons and things like that, how to navigate around the directories. But this is a simple, inexpensive book, all right? Next one is, uh, here's another good one that I like. I use this, all, I mean, this is pretty much my word processor that I use every day at work and at home and everywhere else but it's Microsoft Word for Windows 95, step by step. This is also put up by Microsoft Press. They've been, this has actually been a real good series of books for a long time, but they've come out with a brand new series for 95, and it comes with a disc, and my binder's broke, I'm sorry, but I've opened it up too many times, but it comes with a disc with all kinds of examples so that when you go through the book, you can load these things up and it's got, in, you know, the things already typed in for you, so you, no, you don't have to type everything in. It makes it real easy to go through the tutorial. And this actually has lessons set up to go through and actually answers, you know, it has um, exactly what to do, creating tables and charts, create, you know, changing styles, establishing a look of a, of a page, proofing a document. It has little step-by-step -step lessons on how to use Microsoft Word for Windows 95, all right? Actually, it says that it's supposed to do that, apparently. I don't know. It's got, it says here, lay flat binding. <laughs> Looks like it's broke to me. Anyway, uh, and then my last book, and anyone that's ever seen the show before knows that I just love these books for some reason. I just, I have like every dummies book there is, I think. But this is one that's Microsoft Dummies, Microsoft Office for Windows 95 for dummies. I can't even read it. I'm so dumb. Um, but anyways, this is the, this is a book that's out there that has all the different Microsoft the Office 95 modules. It has the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, and it has a little section in each one of them, how to interface the two of them together to transfer, you know, uh, like an Excel spreadsheet into a, a Word document, how to, you know, go back and forth between the different modules or the different programs. This is a great book. Again, fun to read, easy to read, and uh, it, I've been able to find different things in here that I, you know, someone came up the other day and asked me how big is a I mean, how big can an Excel spreadsheet be in Windows for, you know, Office 95? And it actually said it in here. I have no idea, you know, I, I just happened to remember reading it at one time. Believe it or not, I really do read these books. Everybody thinks I just collect them, put my name in them and collect them, but I actually do use them. All right? Uh, tip of the week. Now this is, let's see how my Prodigy's doing here. Let's see if it's coming up here. Hello. Come on. It seems like something's wacky here. Come on, Nick, come on. You have to talk to it, by the way. I don't know if you knew that or not. All right. For some reason, it didn't... Oh, there... Well, actually, it went into the web browser. What the heck went on there? Apparently, this is part of this uh, thing must be some sort of a web browser. But anyway, let's go down right here and hit chat. And then I'll go... Let's hit the chat button. And then I'll start this... Uh, I'll do my tip of the week, all right? Actually, I can kill two birds with one stone here, but... And we'll, you can see that that thing keeps hopping up and down that little um, start button down in the bottom. You can see it down here in the bottom. 
Some people like that, some people don't. Some people, it drives them nuts. If you go down here and hit with the right button over the top of that start button right there, you can actually hit properties and you can go over here to this little button right that says auto hide and turn that off and that way it'll stay up all the time. So if you hit apply, for example, it stays up all the time. The problem with, so, with some of that, or some of the time, is it takes up real estate. I don't know those technical terms. Real estate on your, on your screen, and if you have something, you'll have a 640 by 40 monitor, for example, on a desktop, a notebook, I mean, and it takes up part of the bottom of the screen all the time. So we'll just go in here and close this real fast. And you can see that on the bottom, now it stays up when we go back, well, of course I didn't do it right, but um, you can see that we can get this out of the way here and let's go up here to this thing right here. But actually you can make that bigger or smaller and get it out of the way, which, where the heck did it go? Let's go down here real fast. There it is. Now one thing that I, that I can actually talk from experience, my wife will get real mad when I say this, but um, she actually did this, and this was something that more than one person I've seen it, this has happened to. This little thing down here in the bottom, this little start button, if you open up 10 billion different programs, which you can do on 95 now, you'll see that this will be filled up along the bottom with all, all these little icons along the bottom, all these little buttons. Well, you can actually take this, and if you move it up to the top of the line that goes across, you can actually move this up and make more room for more buttons on the bottom. But you can see that will get in the way if you make it too big. The other thing you can do by mistake is move this down and then it disappears. And you can see it's gone. There's nothing you can do. The thing is gone off the screen. So if you move down to the bottom till it turns to a little up and down arrow, you can drag it back up. More than one, I guarantee somebody at one time will make that disappear by mistake. The other thing is you can do, if you do that by mistake, you can hit the, uh, you can, there's a hot key to go back and forth and actually go to the start menu. If you hit control escape, the start menu will come up automatically, all right? Let's go back to Prodigy. I don't know what happened with Prodigy. Let's just, there's a chat line. You can go in there. Let's just get out of that. Let's completely close this thing. All right, we'll go back to PowerPoint. And one thing that I wanted to talk about was, there's all my, ch finally the chat line comes up. Let's just get out of there. We'll go back here to PowerPoint. And we'll go back to the uh, screen right here. Tip of the week, my tip of the week was how to bring that little screen thing up on the bottom, a little start menu to go up. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to make sure everybody um, watches every show, of course. But anyways, leave messages on our hotline, which is 587-6949. Uh, email address, this happens to be my email address, but if you want to leave any one of the other, any of the other hosts, like Carlos or James, um, you can actually leave, get on the Phoenix, the, H, the bottom one on the bottom, the address on the bottom. And there's different web, I mean, there's actually email addresses for each one of us. So if you want to leave James a message on something that he's talked about on other shows or, or Carlos and ask him a question or something like that, all our email addresses are on there. Or if you just want to get on my web page for some reason and you want to check things out, the one second from the bottom is my personal web page, which is users.aol.com. I know it's too, much, it's too hard to say, but just write it down. I'm just kidding. But anyway... I, one of these days I'll get a real web page that starts with www. But anyways, I want to make sure, I want to thank, I want to thank everybody for watching the show. I want to make sure everybody knows this has been the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name's been Steve, actually it still is Steve Reeves. It's always been Steve Reeves. And make sure you watch next week and thanks for watching.